Gaming Bolt presents 15 games you wouldn't dare play alone at night. We have a lot to talk about, so without wasting your time, let us begin right away. Outlast. The scariest modern first-person horror game since Amnesia has to be Outlast. Set in an insane asylum, you run into naked brothers hunting you down, as well as an equally naked doctor who wants to run experiments on you. The ending is a bit meh, but the experience from start to end is one of the creepiest in the last decade. Amnesia The Dark Descent Speaking of Amnesia, this is the game that set the standard for the modern horror game. We can thank it for all the terrible first-person horror games on Greenlight now, but we can also thank it for games like Outlast. With its haunting visuals and keeping the main baddie hidden from us most of the time, Amnesia knew what it took to make a game scary. Siren Siren is creepy Japanese horror at its best. It's your typical horror story of an ultra-religious small town that seeks to remain isolated from the outside world, with a creepy kid thrown in for good measure. But it's delivered with all the trappings and subtlety you'd expect from a Japanese horror game or film. Modern attempts to reboot the franchise haven't turned out so great, but the original remains great to this day. Dead Space is a third-person horror action game that forces the player to rip off the limbs of monsters, otherwise they won't die. It's pretty horrifying to have to get a monster on the ground, then tear it limb from limb with a gun that shoots saw blades. What gives it that added kick is the zero-gravity space setting and alien-like sci-fi world. Silent Hill 2 The best horror game ever made and possibly one of the best games ever made, period, depending on who you talk to, is Silent Hill 2. It has one of the best narratives in a game, perfectly blending gameplay and story. You play a guy whose wife is dead, and you have no memory of it, so you travel to this town and find all kinds of terrible things. Fatal Frame Another great Japanese horror game is Fatal Frame. It's similar to Resident Evil in gameplay style, but the twist here is that you have a camera, you use the camera to capture ghosts like some kind of ghost vacuum. Just like Resident Evil, you have to maneuver around a large mansion, and of course you can expect all kinds of weird iconography. PT. As long as you still have the playable teaser for Silent Hills, then this is a great game. Otherwise, well, sorry. This amazing demo was super complex, involving hallways that looped endlessly into themselves, a crying fetus in a sink, and a phone that rang seemingly forever. What else would you expect from Hideo Kojima and Guillermo del Toro? Unfortunately, Konami, in their infinite wisdom, cancelled Silent Hills, fired Kojima, and removed PT from existence, rendering PT impossible to play if you didn't keep the original download. Five Nights at Freddy's 4 the fourth iteration tried to change up the formula by removing the player from the pizza shop and into the bed of a little boy. Not like that, you were the little boy. Anyway, while many players might not have found this one scary, it can provide some chills in short bursts. Until Dawn Until Dawn is what would happen if Telltale ever made a horror game. It's a point-and-click adventure game with dialogue and gameplay choices that will change and alter the story as you go. Here you play several teenaged characters, trapped in the outdoors and a cabin as they try to survive a horrifying monster, and your decisions will decide who lives and who dies. You could make it through the game keeping everyone alive, or you could kill everyone in the first few hours for an interesting ending, if nothing else. Slender – The Eight Pages Like Amnesia, Slender – The Eight Pages started its own subgenre of walking around forests and finding a bunch of pages. Its endless rip-offs aren't great, and the original is still the best. Sure, it's based on internet creepypasta, but Slender still has a great atmosphere. You walk around the woods at night collecting eight pages of a journal, occasionally running into the Slender Man. You have no way of fighting or knowing where he'll show up, so you just have to run blindly through the night. Fear First Encounter Assault Recon is a first-person shooter where your character is part of a SWAT task force dedicated to fighting ghosts and other spooky monsters. Unlike most FPSs though, Fear was actually pretty smart, with an engaging story, though not exactly original, about a little girl who can control ghosts, and actual scary, disempowering moments, unique for a first-person shooter. Alien Isolation 
After the disaster of Alien's Colonial Marines, Sega went to a different developer to try something new. What we got was Alien Isolation, a first-person stealth horror game. You play Ellen Ripley's daughter, Amanda, in search of Ellen. Along the way, you run into the alien, creepy robots called Working Joes, and a few scattered groups of heavily armed humans who are just as scared as you are. Condemned. Usually forgotten when it comes to horror games, Condemned was a classic. It too was first person, but relied on great melee combat and subtle, earthy horror. Again, you were going up against a creepy cult, but for the most part, you were just fighting members of the cult and trying to survive without many guns. The combat was brutal but fun, which is what sold you into the horrific world the game presents. Soma Another great modern horror game. In it, you experience the story of people turning into machines and the ethics of killing these machines, either accidentally or intentionally. Soma is less about going up against scary monsters, although there are a few, and more about body horror, somewhat like the Saw films. And since your character is part of that, it makes it feel way more vivid than many horror games that pits you against an impossible ghost or a weird cult. The Evil Within The Evil Within is basically Resident Evil, but scary again. You play a cop who must survive an evil organization's attempts to kill you. Gameplay is the Resident Evil 4 over-the-shoulder shooter style with a few modern conventions. There's nothing particularly special or innovative about the Evil Within's story, but it's the execution and the ties to old-school Resident Evil that makes this one so special. And that wraps it up. What are your thoughts about this? Let us know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, please like and share it on Twitter and Facebook. And why not consider subscribing? We upload some really cool videos almost every day. Thank you for watching this video, and happy gaming!